Good day and welcome to the channel. This is a mid-2010 iMac and it is unusably slow. The operating system is uh, barely functional at this point and I believe it's mostly because the uh, three and a half inch spinning hard disk that's in there is garbage. And uh, what we need to do is replace it and reload the operating system from scratch and get this. We're gonna salvage this old machine and we're gonna get it to be usable. Now, how are we going to do that? We're gonna pull that drive out and we'll show you how to do that. And we're gonna replace it with a very cheap solid state drive. Now, if you've never uh, understood what a solid state drive is, just think of it as a bunch of memory because that's what it is. If I was to pull these screws out of here and disassemble this, all you'd see is a circuit board with chips on it. No moving parts. Not gonna hurt it. Um, okay, now uh, let's uh, get to the work and uh, we'll explain a couple of things in advance because this might look a bit daunting, but it shouldn't. One of the things for those of you who have watched me uh, work before, you know I have a proper workshop. This is a kitchen table and uh, why am I doing that here? Well, I'm doing it here because I want you to understand that anybody can do this. Please don't pay somebody to do this unless you're really technically inept, in which case please pay someone to do it. But for most people, go spend $25, $30 on Amazon or wherever else for a 240 uh, gigabyte uh, SSD and uh, pop it in. Not very hard to do. Let's get to it. There's a lot of stuff here. You don't need most of it. You probably don't need the needle nose. Um, well, handy to have. Uh, I'm going to use some compressed air to blow it out because it's disgusting inside. I already know that. This box is so that I can take the three and a half inch drive that's in there and mount it in this USB kit so that the drive can still be accessed uh, using USB ports. I want to be able to get the data off of it. Well, I want to be able to protect the data uh, for future use. So that's what that's about. So you don't need that. Tape is really to do this uber cheap. I'm going to tape this drive in. You think you can't tape a drive in. Oh yeah, you can. These don't get very hot and they don't weigh anything. Look at that. They just, well, I guess you can't tell them. They don't weigh anything. Okay, so what you need is something to pry behind here uh, or suction cups. You'll see a lot of guys use suction cups and I'm gonna show you, by the way, suction cup, right? So you could do it with the suction cup, pop it on, pull it off. But there's just magnets around here so you really don't have to use a suction cup. So just get an old credit card, like this is an old Marriott reward card. Pop it in behind and pull it out. If you have good nails, you can do it with, with nails. I do not have good nails, okay? So you can do it with this, um, or like I said, if you have a suction cup, just pop it on, boop. And again, use something like this to pull it out. Not very hard, there we go. Or I actually didn't even need to use it for this, okay? All right, now, this is literally just sort of cantilevered in here, so we can just pop this off and get rid of it. This is just a cover. Before we get started, unplug it, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Make sure you don't have it plugged in. Now the only uh, two bits of, uh, the only real two tools you need uh, are something to make sure that the uh, screws don't get uh, caught in the magnets because the magnets are pretty strong and they'll pull them out. And you also need a Torx screwdriver. Uh, that's why you don't need all of this stuff. I'm just showing, that, showing you that, you know, you use what you've got. Okay, so let's get a little Torx out here. Let's try number eight. You could lay this down, but you don't have to. So there's four screws on this side, four screws on this side. Let's pull them out. So one at the top here, and you can probably tell just from, listen, that is just sucking it in. It's so, that magnet's quite strong. So that's why you might need a um, um, needle nose pliers or something. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit and wait. Here, I'll try to pull it off without them. There you go, yeah. Got it off without it, right? Tip the screen forward, tilt it forward, and you think, good, I've got it. Now I just lift it out. Now there's four cables in behind, or maybe five. Uh, we'll go through them as we pull them off. But uh, basically, you just wanna make sure that you're uh, tilting it forward, and when you're doing that, that you are not touching the screen. If you touch the screen, it will not break the screen. You might just leave a fingerprint. Oh my, what a crisis, I know. Uh, I believe this is called a vertical sync cable. And uh, 
what you do is just pull it out with your fingers on the sides as little clips. There you go. And you can see it's just got a little edge on it. You can just slide straight out. That's easy. Uh, the next one is down here. What you have to do is push it in in the middle and slide it out. So let's do that. There you go. Out. All right, so just push that little clip in. But the one that's going to cause you the most stress is this one. This is the video cable. And uh, it has a clip you need to undo. Uh, so what I want to do is lift this out and drop it down so I can get to it better. But before I do that, I need to pull this cable off. And that one you can just tug up and it just lifts right out. See that? Okay, so let's lift this whole thing out. Oops. Okay, that tells you that this was not assembled very well. That cable should not have popped out like that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what you're supposed to do is tug on this little... Here, let's just show you. What you're supposed to do, this should be into this socket here. And what you're supposed to do, let's turn it over, is tug on this little plastic piece and that'll open it up. And then it will just slide straight out. Anyway, it was loose, came out, good for me. Now I've got the hard drive. Uh, and as soon as I get the hard drive out, I'm gonna blow this thing out and clean it up. Again, just take a Torx. And so this is number eight, by the way, that I'm using. It's a little loose, I could probably use a next size up, but anyway, it is what it is. So let's pull that out. And this one, yeah, I, I have to go up to the next level. It's not. Now, the drive will just pull out, except there's still a cable to go, so just be aware of that. Also, this is your Wi-Fi card. If these uh, uh, clips come off, just snap them back on. These are antennas, so just pop them back on if, they, if you bump them and they come off. So I'm just going to grab the drive, I'm going to slide it that way, and then out, and then I have a cable to take off, which is this one right here. So let's pull this out, lift it up, there we go, and over. Let's show you the cables. This is a heat sensor, it's just old technology. Then there's the SATA cable, which just again slides straight out. And then there's the power cable, which again just slides straight out. So, And then there's the old hard drive. Uh, it's a three and a half inch, oh this is a 500 gig. Well that was nice. Uh, and it's actually a pretty good one, 16 meg of cache. Back in the day this would have been one very expensive drive. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside on my deck and I'm going to blow it out. Okay, I got my compressed air, put my little connector in, and blow it out. Specifically those fans. Look at that. This is plastic, there's no metal parts. There's nothing wrong with using double-sided tape and just taping that thing right on there. That's fine. Tucking it under, whatever. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But what I'm gonna do so I maintain this part is I'm gonna take this little bracket off and I'm gonna tape this to it. And you think, can you use tape? Yeah, it's gonna be just fine. Okay, so let's just back that screw off and you'll see why in a minute. Now I've got this bracket off and what I wanna do is, see these two mount points? I'm just gonna put this back on here, but I'm gonna tape this onto it. Congratulations, you're now an engineer. Now, let's just put the, the cables on. So the SATA cable just slides in, pretty straightforward. It's an L, so you can't possibly screw it up. It has to be done one way. You cannot make it wrong. You cannot screw it up. And you think, oh my God, but what about this? Yeah, that's a problem. What we're gonna do to override this, because the operating system may be looking for it, um, uh, what we're going to do, and the, the hardware may be looking for it, is we're going to get a piece of software that overrides the uh, temperature sensor. This from getting caught up and stuff, I'm simply going to tuck it in behind here. There we go. Something that I see I didn't focus on that I really should have when I was outside was the third fan that's in here. So I've already cleaned this out, but, but I'll just show you it's right in here. I, okay. Okay, just make sure you get all three. I should have said three fans. So the one, two, three. Make sure you get all three. Okay, let's put the uh, screen back on. Sets in, that's about right, there it is. This is the easiest cable to put on, I'm gonna get that in, just to get it out of the way. There we go, put this little tiny one in. Now I've done this a few times, and sometimes it pops in, and sometimes I have to struggle with it. So, hopefully, oh, look at that, in like a dream. Video cable in, or try to. Okay, that's in. 
And I just have to put the last cable in. It's a very simple connector. There it is. And instead of reassembling it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to make sure this works because I don't want to go through all of this effort and find out that I have the cables bad. So let's power it up. Power buttons on the back. And what I want to do is press Option Command R to get into the recovery. Uh, so let's power this up because I want to install this nice fresh operating system. So let's press the power button and then Command Option R and just hold it. Yes! We have a winner! Woo! So I started uh, bolting this and back in. I had to lift the screen up a bit with one hand and screw with the other because of course the, the holes are not perfect. They, they line up, but there's a bit of gravity involved here and you need to beat that gravity by lifting it up so that the, the, the holes uh, line up with the, uh, with the screws. See if it right here, there are a couple of, not really fingerprints, but they're a bit smudgy. I could just take something like a little tea towel and brush this off, but there's a better solution. Let me get that. Glasses cleaner, glasses cleaner. Now I don't want to spray this right on the screen, although I could. I'm just going to put a little bit on here and I'm just going to take this and just rub those little fingerprints out. There we go. Just take this, pop it on the bottom, slide it in from the bottom, let the magnets do their work. It won't line up quite straight, so you have to squish it a little bit left to right. There we go, that's happy. I see some fingerprints in here, so I'm gonna, while I've got this little out, I'm gonna clean it. And that's the end of part one, which explains how to swap out your drive for a new drive. Part two will show you how to boot and have your iMac download and install a fresh version of macOS directly from the internet.